The Ping to Chart banner encapsulates our decade-long commitment to bring to the Marine GIS marketplace a suite of software products that extends from sonar processing to chart production through to the distribution of the data. Our focus for this year is not just extending the capabilities of these tools, but more importantly, ensuring their interoperability with intuitive and sensible workflows. The key marketplace trends that we are pursuing are usability, interoperability, and processing efficiency. Our customers need their software tools to help their trainees get up and running in full production as fast as possible. As owners or gatekeepers of geospatial data, our customers want efficient workflows for sharing and distributing data. The computer resource is now readily available both on the desktop and with systems like grid computing demand that our software tools take advantage of these processing efficiencies. Our technology showcase at Keras 2010 includes sonar processing, bathymetry management, chart production, and the latest in our web technologies. Let's start by looking at our sonar processing system, HIPS and SIPS. Hi, my name is Corey Collins and I'm the product manager for HIPS and SIPS. And my name is Michael Hennifer, and I'm a developer on the HIPS and SIPS product team. The Keras application used for sonar processing is HIPS and SIPS. We've been working on it for around 10 years, and in that time we've added support for over 40 different sonar data types. And we've also added many tools for data processing and data cleaning. We are currently developing a 64-bit version of HIPS and SIPS. In today's world, with ever-increasing sizes of data sets, it's very important that we take advantage of today's technology. Uh, we feel we are doing this with the 64-bit version of HIPS and SIPS as well as with multiprocessing that we're adding. Our initial implementation of GeoCoder was released with HIPS and SIPS 7.0. We currently support Kongsberg and Rezon systems. Over 2010, we plan on implementing va various other formats such as Klein SDF uh, and various sonars stored in the XDF format. The latest version of Plot Composer in Keras HIPS and SIPS 7.0 is used to create charts, posters, and plots from within the field for presentation purposes. We currently support several bathymetric LiDAR formats in HIPS and SIPS 7.0. Uh, those formats include LADS, Shoals, and generic bathymetric LiDAR stored in LAST format. We've also currently uh, been working on and are implementing support for the Hawkeye uh, bathymetric LiDAR system. 3D visualization is very important to the HIPS and SIPS workflow. It allows the user to view the data in a normalized 3D view and easily see various features in their data. Once they see those features, they can easily launch Subset Editor to clean the data. My favorite feature of HIPS and SIPS is the 3D view. Today's technology has allowed us to do many interesting things within the view and add many interesting innovations. Um, from a personal standpoint, I've also spent a lot of time at Keras working on this view and have had a lot of fun while developing it. Also, I'm looking forward to adding many new innovations to the view. The thing I like best about HIPS and SIPS is the vast uh, variety of line processing tools that we have. It really allows the user to uh, dig in to their data. It allows them to basically troubleshoot the data and correct these issues within the application itself as opposed to having to go back and recollect uh, data in the field. My name is Mark Massery and I'm the R&D manager at Keras. My name is Mike Van Duzzi and I'm the lead developer for BDB. The Keras application that's used for bathymetric data management is uh, Keras BDB. Oracle Spatial will be our new RDBMS backend for BDB. We'll be storing all of our gridded data in it, all of our point data in it, all of our surface data in it, and all of the attribution as well. We'll be using Oracle Spatial's native types to store our high volume data, so we're really able to leverage the power of Oracle's database. Variable resolution surfaces are a new kind of surface that allows us to store um, different resolutions uh, within the same surface. So we can actually, instead of having a regular grid, treat the entire surface as a collection of different areas, all of which have a different kind of resolution. And we can grid that and contour it and treat it the same way we would treat any of our existing grids. It's a whole new kind of technology. BDB can be used as a powerful tool for coastal zone management uh, due to its ability to combine both bathymetric and topographic data into one seamless surface. 
BDB supports True3D through what we call a point cloud, which is our new data structure for storing billions of points. Every point can be a completely independent XYZ position in 3D space. So we can actually model 3D solids and 3D objects that we were never able to model before. Uh, my favorite tool in BDB would probably be our uh, automatic depth area creation. Um, in the past, all this work was done manually, very time consuming, um, and uh, through uh, a lot of work, uh, we were able to automate the process and uh, produce some pretty good results. My favorite tool in BDB is actually our 3D window. It lets me fly around large volumes of data, investigate data in real 3D, drape imagery, and, and just sort of look at different aspects of all of the stuff that I can bring into the BDB application. I'm Stefan Theriot, I'm the HPD Product Manager. I'm Sherry Mann, I'm the S57 Composer Lead Developer. The Keras applications that are used for chart production are our HPD suite of tools, which includes Source Editor, Product Editor, and Paper Chart Editor, as well as our desktop application, S57 Composer. As of HPD 2.8, uh, HPD can be used for raster chart production in many ways. Uh, you can load existing raster bases in the database and maintain them using a standard set of raster editing tools. That includes uh, vector uh, brushing, burning, or you can also use uh, uh, new vector data from the source database to update your raster bases. And you can export that to BSV format, uh, PostScript, and other say, uh, standard format for uh, raster charting. We're addressing the charting needs of the U.S by supporting the VPF product format in our S57 Composer application. HPD can be used to generate several types of products. Uh, by its nature, you can expand the data model, the object catalog, and the product profiles to accommodate uh, whatever types of charts or electronic charts that you want to generate. Uh, for the law of the sea, we're actually working on expanding the object catalog and the uh, product profile to uh, accommodate the uh, specific limits and boundaries uh, features. Uh, Keras has been involved with the electronic charting format since the beginning uh, and with uh, respect to S100, uh, we are still taking an active role into the implementation of the standard and also uh, the implementation and building of tools for our clients so they can use the standard and generate product that will comply with S100. My favorite tool in HPD is coming with the uh, 281 release of the Paper Chart Editor. It's a new tool that will allow users to automate the process of adding marginalia features around their chart. So that will save users a lot of time and uh, make them more productive in their uh, environment. My favorite tool is in the Paper Chart Editor and is the ability to automatically annotate features on the chart. My name is Claude LeBlanc, and I'm Product Manager for Keras Facial Fusion Enterprise. My name is Tim Astle, I'm Development Manager for the web products. Keras has Spatial Fusion Enterprise, and it's a product that allows you to share your data to the web. There's a server component and a viewer component. Spatial Fusion Enterprise implements OGC services. That means the server can distribute data through well-known interfaces, and our viewer communicates to these same OGC services and actually is able to view and extract data through them. This allows you to extract and pull out high resolution bitmetry data and allow it to be accessible through the web. Spatial Fusion Enterprise is going to start supporting a OGC web coverage service. What the service is going to allow is for when you connect to your Bathy database, you're going to be able to pull out 32-bit geotiffs and then allow those to be extracted from the Spatial Fusion viewer so you can actually perform an operation and see some data and pull it out and do something with it. Keras is embracing Google by allowing the application to use the API of Google Maps to use as a base map for your application. We also support data extraction to the KML format. My favorite thing about SFE is the backend. It's the stuff you can't see. It's the ability to register data, create your WMS and WFS services, and have this web enabled in such a short period of time. My favorite feature tool is, is actually a combination of them. What I like is the idea of doing mashups. You're able to go and grab Google data, then you'll be able to also grab maybe open street maps, make different themes, take your bathymetry data, lay it on top of other data types, 
pull in sensor data like KML or GeoJSON and put on top, make these really interesting maps and share them with the world.